So far, we've regarded matrices as a convenient way of describing a system of linear equations, such as uh, this system consisting of three equations and three unknowns. You've seen this uh, several times before. But, and this is all fine, there's no problem in that, but uh, in this video I'm going to treat matrices a little more abstract and uh, we're going to be dealing with matrices in their own right, so to speak, and try to investigate what is a matrix, because it's really more than just a way of writing equations. In order to probably, probably investigate what matrices are, we have to go a little more abstract, and we have to turn to the field in mathematics called abstract algebra. In abstract algebra, we have a very central and very important concept uh, called a group. And a group is rather an abstract uh, concept. Um, but basically, it's, it's a set of elements and an operation of some sort. That's the two things it consists of. And, it, and these, uh, this set and operation has to comply with four uh, requirements. But as I go through these requirements, uh, let's think of an example um, that makes it a little less abstract and easier to, to understand. So uh, let, let our group example be the set of real numbers. And let, let the operation be addition. So the first requirement that this set and operation must meet is the requirement of closure. Closure means that if I take an element x from the set and another element y from the set, and I use these, this operation to combine these two elements, so x plus y, let's say that's z, then we demand that z is also a member of, of um, the set. And um, that's pretty obvious when we're dealing with real numbers. If you add two real numbers, you get a real, another real number out of it. Um, so our set here and our operation complies with this requirement. The next requirement is the property of associativity. Mm, let's um, take this number one. And associativity just means that if I apply the operation twice on three elements, it shouldn't matter whether I first add x and y and then z, or if I add y and z first and then add x. Um, there should be no difference in the result. And uh, of course, in case of the real numbers here, it's pretty obvious that it doesn't matter uh, the, order, the order in which I add the numbers. So we can, uh, we can safely say that the real numbers uh, can meet this requirement. The third requirement is uh, the existence of a neutral element. And what that means is that there should be an element in the, in the set, let's call it E, so that when you add E to X, you just get X itself as a result. Um, so this element E is the neutral element and the uh, um, it's pretty obvious that, that in the case of the real numbers, uh, the neutral element E is zero, because if you add zero to any number, you just get the same number as a result. So um, we can safely say that uh, this requirement is met as well. And then there's the last requirement, which is uh, the existence of, a, of an inverse element. And that just means that uh, for every uh, element in the set, in this case the real numbers, there should be another element, we could call it x star, uh, which is also part of the set, 
uh, and uh, this element x star should uh, satisfy this requirement that when you add it to the to the element you get the neutral element so what this means is that every element has an inverse which when added to the element gives the neutral element and uh, it's pretty obvious that what we're talking about here is that if x is say 3 then the inverse element is just minus 3 because then when you add minus 3 to 3 you get 0 which is the neutral element so the real numbers satisfy this requirement as well but what then about matrices? Do they constitute a group? Well, let's take a look at that. And um, we choose the operation of addition as our operation. And let's just go through the four requirements and see if uh, they are met by the matrices. Um, closure. Well, if you add two matrices, then you certainly get a matrix out of it but is it the same dimension yes it is say we have a 2 by 3 matrix that we add to a 2 by 3 matrix then we certainly get a 2 by 3 matrix out of it so closure is is all right here and what about associativity well i won't go into proofs but i believe it's pretty obvious that it doesn't matter what order we add the matrices since after all the uh, operation of addition is is the same as we know it from the real numbers except we just perform it on each element so um, we can safely say that uh, it doesn't matter whether we are adding these two first or if we're adding these two first so associativity is taken care of as well. The neutral element, uh, I believe it's in the case of two by three matrices, this would be the neutral element. So it's just a matrix, two by three matrix consisting of uh, entirely of zeros. If you add that, if you add that matrix to any two by three matrix, you get the same matrix out of it. So that's the neutral element and what about inverse well um, you would just have to find say you have a matrix here a b c d can you find a matrix um, e f g h which when added to a b c d gives you zero 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 uh, yes uh, you just uh, you just put a minus in front of uh, the elements over here and then you get the inverse matrix so to speak and uh, that would give you the zero matrix on the right hand side so yes we can find an inverse element for every uh, matrix so matrices can uh, constitute a uh, group under the operation of addition However, it gets a little more troublesome if I change this operation into multiplication. Then we run into trouble because, well, for one thing, we know that we can't even add, or sorry, we can't even multiply these two matrices. You cannot multiply a 2 by 3 matrix by a 2 by 3 matrix. So, even at that point, even trying to multiply two, uh, two two by three matrices, we get into trouble. So it's pretty obvious that we can't say that matrices um, constitute a group under the operation of multiplication. However, as it turns out, there are some matrices that uh, constitute a group under the operation of multiplication and uh, you probably already guessed it these matrices are the square matrices um, not all square matrices uh, 
can uh, satisfy these requirements, but some of them can, and that's, well, I guess that's pretty much the reason why we deal separately with these matrices. So now I've tried to motivate why it's interesting to even think about mat square matrices as a particular kind of matrices. In the next video, I'll try to look more into the properties of square matrices.